All right. Hello, world. Welcome, everybody, to the Crypto Wolf YouTube channel. This is the first video, but we're going to actually get into some stuff today. Um, first off, I want to do an introduction to Market Cipher for beginners mainly. And what we'll do is we'll go over the different parts of micro Market Cipher. We'll talk about some of the, the different indicators, the symbols, what they mean, and even just some basic strategy, things to look for, how to use these indicators, at least at a basic and maybe even a little above basic level. So what I'm planning on doing, you know, typically I want to do a video and we will we'll go over one specific part of market market cipher or you know we'll go over part of trading view or even just other indicators because you know uh, there's just a lot of stuff that even i don't know a lot of people out there i'm sure don't know and if you're a beginner you know it's nice to have things really explained in depth so to do a video focusing on at least like one or maybe even you know some similar things within the the charts here I think will be helpful for me helpful for you and hopefully we all get something out of it so let's just get into it so what we've got here we've got the Bitcoin chart I'm going to it's a 15 minute kind of see what's going on right now I'm gonna zoom out to the daily here a little bit snap that back but here on the channel what I'm trying to do, at least for every video, is start off just going over even just one tool, whether it be Market Cipher, whether it be Trading View, or even other indicators. Uh, God knows there's thousands of them out there, and most of them I have no idea what the hell they are. So I'll start by saying this I am not an expert. I have not been doing this terribly long. I've been trading for. Oh, probably about a year now first got into crypto back in 2018 you know let it fall off didn't do too much had a bunch of stuff sitting off in a wallet somewhere came back into it I think like 20 end of 2020 maybe and you know came across the uh, market cipher and crypto face it was like holy cow you know that looks way better than anything I was doing and obviously, if you watch his uh, live streams, you know, dude ain't playing around. He's out here trading, doing it like nobody else on YouTube. That's for sure. And so, like, let's give it a shot. You know, I, I saw the the price to get in at the time. I was like, woo! All right. Like, are we gonna, you know, we're gonna have to make that commitment. And so, I saved up a little bit. Said, all right, let's get it bought it i think i did the six month membership first you know traded with that for a while yeah you know wasn't doing terrible i was actually doing better on some of my spot trading than i was on the little bit of leverage trading i was doing over on bybit and you know i made decent enough money on the spot trading i mean at the time you know bybit didn't have that many pairs so some of the some of the altcoins that i was messing with you know weren't really anywhere that I could do anything with I mean with leverage at least and so yeah was doing it then uh, you know the bull market kind of peaked off there a little bit the, the amigos hat started to tip and uh, yeah I just that kind of stepped back took a break was like all right you know the, the the Bybit account wasn't doing so hot like hey, let me let me re recoup here a little bit and uh, after the subscription expired, and I've heard this from a lot of people, it, it, it's not the same. It really isn't. Like once you're using Market Cipher, and then you try to go without it, you feel naked. I mean, you just you're feeling naked on the chart. It, it just, walk around without your pants on. It's it, you can't even do it. You can't even do it. So obviously, got the subscription going back again, and. Uh, that's just a brief little history of, you know, where I've been at with trading. But, you know, I'm thinking for this channel, I want to try to 
go through this almost basically from a beginner standpoint because I know there's a lot of people out there who are beginners and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more coming in the near future I mean we're crypto's kind of at a lull right now you know there's not a lot of the FOMO going on you don't you're not hearing about it on the news I mean you are hearing a little bit on the news but it's not like it's not like peak bull market you know your, your mom and your grandpa and the people at work are asking you about dogecoin it's just it's not it's not that point right now so it's a good time to get in. It's a good time to start practicing, get, you know, start learning, get to know uh, what you're doing a little bit. And so hopefully in the course of helping you guys to do that, I help myself to do it a little bit. And if we can all, if we can all get better at it and we can all make some money and we'll just mature through this trading thing together, then uh, all the better, you know. So uh, my plan is... Today, rather than just focusing on like one teeny little thing out here, you know, I'm going to do a little overview on the market cipher and go through what the different things are, the different parts, and then we're going to get into the basic strategy. If you know anything about market cipher, you probably heard it. You know, crypto face out here saying it like a broken record. So I guess I'm uh, I'm guilty of piracy because I'm going to copy and repeat that because that's the freaking truth. I mean, basic strategy, especially when you're starting out. You gotta learn it gotta do it keep it simple stupid that's the way to do it and uh, so let's get into it looking at the chart over here we got again Bitcoin coinbase for uh, no we're not on the four we're on the daily and this isn't quite what you would see if you first get it when you first get market cipher you're gonna have the ribbon going across and I, I could you know unhide that and show it to you I basically got it down to just two of these EMA bands I guess technically three. We got this little guy here. But I got it down to the, you know, these two. I do kind of use them a little bit, but you can kind of see some stuff going on with those right now. This right here is Market Cipher A. You know, this is the first part, the part you see on the candles, the part that's on the chart. And oh, we're on the Heikinashi candles, if you don't know what that is. Here's your regular candles. You can see it looks like uh, an autistic kid put together some Christmas lights. You got green, 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 red, 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 flip-flop back and forth. It could be kind of crazy. On one hand, it's the reality of what's really going on. But on the other hand, especially for trading, it can it can get people going off kind of half-cocked, you know, especially uh, if, if you're trading emotionally. You know, you're, you're say you got a long going. That's a bad example. And then you see this pull back, you're going up, you see three reds pull back, you know, you start freaking out, maybe cut it short. And then later on when you're up here, you start wondering like, oh man, why did I cut that short? But that's not necessarily a bad thing, but, you know, especially when you get down on these small time frames, you know, it's volatile, it's crypto. And a lot of people like to use the Heikinashi candles because it's almost, it's almost simplified. And although you're not seeing the exact reality of the price i mean it's it's good enough and if that's what you you get used to and you're trading with it'll work for you now if i'm at, you know i'll have trading view open on this screen and i'll have the exchange over on another screen on the exchange i'll actually leave the regular candles on while i'm trading but generally when i'm doing some analysis looking at marcus cipher i got the heikinashi candles going <coughs> all right so, trading view A, uh, sorry, half, my bad, market cipher part A, you'll have your ribbon going through with your EMAs, you know, like this one, you got your big, bold yellow, um, I forget offhand right now, I, I could do it in a future video when we focus more on certain parts, I could tell you what EMA that is specifically, but you'll notice in this one here, it's changing from gray to blue, back to gray. Never really got in the blue, staying gray. And that's kind of, uh, you know, when you get these crosses. And it tends to happen at the crosses. See, look, it cross came to blue, cross came to blue, cross back, turned to gray, cross came to blue. This case right here, where it didn't quite make it into the blue. And I'm going to have to look in to see why it does that. But it's kind of a general overall trend as far as your little EMA ribbons going it's probably when the ribbon itself flips 
and I don't have the whole ribbon turned on so we're not really gonna see that very well but then you'll notice all these little uh, little symbols these little fancy little shapes and colors going on up here above the candles now you see these can you see the cursor yeah you can see the cursor I hate drawing on here it's kind of like just never comes out right but I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you'll see these uh, almost like faded yellow diamonds right here those are typically a continuation indicator you know you can see okay you know we're green we're coming up we're going up pops to the next one you're getting all these little I hesitate to call them yellow diamonds but I call them yellow diamonds and they're going they're going the pattern is content the trend is continuing and then you get to a small red diamond and that that trend you know when we're talking generally in the the short term here that and I suppose it could be long term I mean this is a daily chart depending on how you look at it but you get the small red diamond it's generally a little bit of a trend reversal down here you kind of see we got a red dot which this is a terrible spot to look at it but generally red dots tend to happen when the VWAP is crossing over the zero line again here red triangle red dot on part B and most people don't or at least from what I've seen and heard don't really seem to pay too too much attention to these and I'll get into these in a little bit more detail in a future video but this guy here this uh, blue triangle if I remember correctly is signifies like a larger like uh, change in momentum I believe and feels like that could be right you know over here we got this change in momentum going right about that time over here they got this change in momentum coming over here change in momentum it, it's not a hundred percent it's certainly not a a buy or a sell signal so you know don't treat it as if it's the end all be all you know telling you to go drop your house money on the chart but sometimes you know especially when you get up into these higher time frames ah, son of a... all right when you get up into these higher time frames I think like hourly and up a lot of times it will show you you know up here coming up triangle swapped coming up here trend reversed now that green dot which comes after the triangle not to be confused with BitBoy's famous green dots, which you will see down here at the bottom, is originally, I believe, supposed to be a continuation pattern. So you got your triangle. It keeps pumping. It keeps pumping. You got your green dot, and you're kind of continuing on. Again, this is not ironclad, but you will see it again here. Green dot continuation keeps on chugging, keeps on chugging. I think I can, I think I can. Little Thomas the Tank Engine makes it up the hill. Again, just to be clear, it's not 100% on those. I don't necessarily make decisions off of those. Don't let it dictate where my money is going. But if you see something like that, you keep an eye out, you know? Now, what is a little bit better are these big red diamonds that we call blood diamonds. The big red diamonds. And those tend to indicate that it's going to dump. It's not going to say how much it's going to dump. Again, you know, it doesn't mean uh, you're getting wrecked immediately. But quite often, see this one, 
and, and what happens is, you know, the the data that is going into Market Cipher, you could easily start seeing the data right here and that blood diamond prints especially you're looking on a smaller time frame i mean it could have just whoop did that whole candle all at once and to a computer it's going to look the same as maybe it did right here or it did right here because it can't see the future i don't care what anybody says there is no indicator that is gonna wax its little crystal glass ball and tell you what the future is. I mean, you could try your magic eight ball, but yeah, I mean, half the time that thing even says ask again later, so it doesn't freaking know. So, anybody that tells you you got an indicator that shows you the future, yeah, yeah go listen to somebody else. Or at least take it with a grain of salt. Now, I will say this market cipher does, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, you have leading and trailing indicators. I'd say this is the closest thing to a leading indicator that I've personally seen or I've heard anybody talk about. Technically, I mean, just about everything is a trailing indicator because it's all based off of previous data. <coughs> but the fact that this is showing you these momentum waves, got the money flow, and we'll get into those here in a second when we get to part B. It is about the closest thing you're going to get to a leading indicator and it's certainly a live time indicator because you're not waiting for the candle to confirm and the next candle to print before you actually get indicators off of that <clears throat> like you will get you know your red dots your green dots you'll get your little yellow triangles and you'll get your uh, blood diamonds on the current live candle and what we we call that printing so if we were to get a blood diamond right now we'd say there's a blood diamond printing on the daily chart now does that mean it's gonna stay that way no it's not guaranteed basically printing means it is there until the next candle is printed and, and then it's there forever on the previous candle going you know all the way back to however back you go and that means it's confirmed. So all these little symbols back here down the chart, these are all confirmed. They're never going to change. The only thing that will change is this current candle right here. And I think that's a good segue to get into our next part. Oh, I think I skipped these too. These little red X's are like the trend break. So you kind of have the red diamond and I, I forget off the top of my head honestly there's probably a better definition for it and we will get into that later you know when we focus specifically maybe not just on you know one symbol but we will get into <coughs> these symbols pretty deep and you know at any time you could go to marketciphertrading.com they have the tutorials they've got instruction vids they've got that super slick looking little like uh, help manual like startup manual <clears throat> it's like a animated digital magazine i mean whoever put that shit together props to you i like it that was pretty impressive i won't lie but over here you'll notice we have all these all these little numbers just just chilling out here in space just getting all lonely out here by itself and then uh, getting all cozy in here together so you might be wondering what these numbers are Pardon me for a second. I'm going to drink of water here. <sighs> That's better. All right. So these numbers are Market Cipher DBSI. <coughs> DBSI is Dual Band Strength Index. And basically, Dual Band is fairly self explanatory. You got one band down here, one band up there. Dual strength index is telling you the the bullishness and the bearishness of that candle and i think there's something like i don't know face you're gonna have to fact check me on this was it like 36 different indicators going into this thing i think i think he said it was 36 and anyways this is the newest part of market cipher the latest update to come out <coughs> 
which by the way is included with the membership doesn't cost you anything else dude's cool like that anytime he starts adding new stuff to the indicator it's just part of the indicator it's what you get <coughs> oh man my throat's dry today i apologize freaking allergies are acting up probably not the best day to start the youtube channel but we're gonna do it anyways because procrastinating will kill you all right and so when you're looking at this basically it goes from i believe negative five to a, a max of 25 i think 25 or 26 maybe and when you get higher numbers on the bottom that means you have more bullish pressure pointing up so right here your 20 23 24 means you had much more bullish pressure pushing the price up Man, that was a tongue twister. And when you see negative 5, like here, here, that is <clears throat> obviously the least amount of bearish pressure pushing down on the price. And so there, there's things that I've noticed through watching this. So like when you see 24 here, you think, okay, bullish pressure is maxed out. Like this thing's gonna pump and hit the moon right <coughs> not exactly typically when you get to the highest numbers on uh, your bullish or bearish dbsi numbers it, it's tending to like burn itself out think of it like you're hitting 20 23 24 it's you know it's firing on all, on all cylinders it's burning bright problem is it's gonna run out of gas faster Whereas when you see 15, 16, these are solid numbers that tend to be, it tends to be anywhere between like 11, 12, and like 18 when it's really pumping the most. Like right here, 14, 15, solid green candles. This one, I mean, I, we're in a bit of a bearish trend, so it lost its gas right there. And you know, we're on the daily chart. And the daily chart, the DBSI is not exactly written in stone. You know, you're not, you're not going to take it like the Ten Commandments because you got 24 hours per candle, and a lot can happen in 24 hours. So because this says 16 right now, it doesn't mean it's going to be 16 till tomorrow night. But that's what's going on with the DBSI. And again, you know, if you want to you want to see a video about that let me know in the comments i'll spend a whole video just on dbsi some of the little tips and tricks that you know that i've found in the course of using market cipher let's scooch these guys off the chart all right so that is market cipher a <clears throat> and again you can go in here change color these are all the different ribbons all your different little symbols you could go in here show all of them matter of fact here since I'm already in here I'll turn on the ribbon for you I'll be a nice guy alright so that's everything turned on now you'll see these lines for the swing lows and swing high boundaries frankly I don't know anybody who leaves these on it's there if you want it there you go show pivot high show pivot low but I'm gonna let it go so you got your ribbon here you can see whoop, ribbon flipped it's gray now it's white here gray here white here and if you don't know what it means when the ribbon flip basically this EMA band up here on top is coming through and switched over to the bottom so it's literally like if you were to take uh, an actual fabric ribbon and you were to twist it and it folds over <coughs> and what that is is each one of these is a different EMA if you don't understand EMAs we'll get into that on another video too that I'm not gonna go into the nuts and bolts here but basically it's the the average of a number of candles going back 
you know, say this one might be the 200 EMA, probably something like that. So it's an average of the previous 200 candles. Whereas up here, you know, this one's a lot closer to the candles. This one might be like a 10 EMA, which is 10 candles. And then you've got a couple different kinds. You have just regular moving average. <clears throat> and then you got your EMAs. Again, different video. Not getting into that. Let's get into B. This, this is the bread and butter right here. This is market cipher B. Now, there's a little bit going on here, admittedly. You know, there, there's, there's quite a few things. And before I get too deep into it, I want to say that the most important thing you can do is try to keep it simple, especially at first, because it's easy to get caught up in... Now you can't see my hands. I'm an idiot. I'm over here talking with my hands like I got a camera on. It's easy to get caught up in just everything going on. You know, all the different time frames. You're flip-flopping back and forth between, you know, different coins and tokens. <clears throat> different time frames. All these different indicators. After a while, you, you kind of learn to read it like, uh, you know... It, it's like looking at traffic you know when you're you know a kid or a new driver you might be looking around at every single car like oh shit he's getting close to me oh hey get off my bumper like you're seeing every single car and you're you just the tension's all over the place it's sensory overload and so after a little while you will get used to looking at it from a big picture kind of perspective and that is the best way to keep it simple. And even if you kept it down to just maybe a couple indicators, you know, just, okay, don't, don't put too much credence in these big blue momentum waves just yet. Maybe just keep it simple. And I'll get into the parts of what to keep it simple with here. So these big uh, little wa oscillating waves here, the red and green, those are the money flow. And that is the money flow going into and out of the asset class. Yes, I'm copying off you. The money flow into and out of the asset class. And that is a very, <clears throat> very general, you know, broad indicator right there. But it is really, really important. That one right there is going to determine the general direction largely probably more important than the rest of them uh, equally important but that's your you know this is your big time general direction and you can see it right here let me shrink this down a little bit so for example big pump big pump nice bull market what do we have nice little spike in the green money flow nice little peak on the green money flow third time up to bat come back nope didn't quite make it to the red and boom we're off and pumping we're off and pumping but you'll notice even after we pumped and peaked right here on the money flow you know that's only about right here we still had all this pump all this bull run left to go <clears throat> and yet you start seeing this money flow going down basically it's a money flow divergence if you don't know what divergence is we'll be doing a video on that one too but basically it's when the price is going up but your indicators are pointing down and it could be other directions same thing reverse flip-flop but just for this case for this example price is pumping up indicators going down your money flow was going down out of the asset class while the price was still going up that is why when that big pump bull run was going and it was getting to the top and we were starting to roll off the top you know it wasn't going up anymore it was starting to roll over it was tapering out why people like crypto face and i know a bu enough bunch of other people were out here saying you know it's time to back off a little bit take your profits you know if you're if you if you're hodling but you don't plan on just letting it sit forever if you're trying to 
trying to gauge the bull and the bear markets. It was time to sell. I mean, even Face was saying, sell him, may walk away. Dude wasn't lying. He was seeing what we were all seeing. The money flow was leaving, despite the fact that every YouTube channel was out here. So it's going to 330,000. It's going to a million. Bitcoin's going to the moon. And uh, yeah, we kind of got smacked back down in the atmosphere, as you can see. But it tells you how important this money flow indicator really is. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can go back as far as you want to go back. Look, pumping, money flow, peaking up like that. Money flow came down. Price came down. Now, obviously, this was an anomaly. That was the COVID dip. And you see it in the momentum wave. The money flow came down a little bit, but that was like an entire global market-wide dip that is hard to take into account when you're when you're talking strategy in the charts here it's one of them things that it just happens now obviously if you're looking at this and you're saying okay we had our nice big pumping bull run then <coughs> we came down here money flow came into the red while we were dumping everybody was getting scared the fear and greed index was looking like a horror movie people hiding under the sheets it was going bananas but then whoop, starts going up hey we're pumping again all right we're back we're going to a hundred thousand bitcoins hitting a hundred k can't nobody tell me different but we were still looking weak and you'll see here and this is on a higher time frame mind you <clears throat> same thing's true on the lower ones just so you know but you'll see these two lines were split huh a little bit back here too <clears throat> what these lines are is they are the rsi and RSI is your relative strength index, and you have RSI and stochastic RSI, which is just one that's calculated slightly different, just to keep it simple. And when your RSIs are split like this, particularly that much, I mean, that's fairly significant. That's a sign of weakness. And any of my fighters out there know if you show weakness they will attack <laughs> but even still they came together and it started looking a little better you know the RSI came together it was hanging out up top which is you know your peak strength you know here's your 100 line things can go above 100 I don't know if RSI ever goes above 100 but momentum can go above 100 but when your RSI is peaked like this you know you're at Peak performance. It, you, you got your got your protein shakes going, pumping out those reps. It's it's ready to go to the moon, but it didn't quite make it. Once again, you know we were going, we were going. Momentum was barely even breaking. You know I think what we just broke seventy on that one. <coughs> it just, it didn't have the gas, is what I'm saying. You look up here, momentum waves. We're coming up above the 60 RSI, just hanging out at the top at the eagle's nest like a boss till it finally came down. Here we were hanging out. <clears throat> money flow was going up. You know, money flow was going up. And then it took a sharp decline. And we were still in the green. It bounced back a little bit. We started pumping a little bit. You know, everybody changed their undies and... Pulled the big boy pants up. They were good to go. They, they weren't scared no more. And things were moving. Everybody was happy. YouTube was doing its YouTube thing. But then the money flow starts to decrease again. And the price started falling again. Now this one was a little odd. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. It almost seemed like it should have kept going there, but... We had a little resurgence, and then it just stayed at this level. Now, what we want to see <clears throat> when you're having healthy market flows, 
not to be misconstrued with your girl's ant flow, is you see these nice, round, curved, well, I'm not going to make that joke, but you know we like the curves. You all like the curves. Even you ladies out there, you like the curves too, don't lie. But you have these nice, flowing, healthy little curves in the market. You know, things are oscillating, which you don't necessarily want to see is, you know, the, the real jagged, you know, where we started coming up and then we took this jagged little dip. I mean, you're going to get dips, you know, you're going to, you're going to get pullbacks, you know, <clears throat> you know, bearish dips tend to happen a little faster than bullish pumps a lot of the time, but it, it it really didn't keep that curved shape, did it? <clears throat> you know, I pumped a little bit, got smacked back down, came up, and then it just kind of stayed at this level for a little bit before it just ran out of gas and fell right out of the sky. <clears throat> and obviously from there... Oh, shit, my bad. I hit the mic. Obviously from there, we came pretty... pretty deep in the red here i mean that, that's a that's a pretty solid money flow to the red i mean if you look at this you know we weren't that low in the red till back here you know back here was the last time we got got that low like a little john song i mean right here was basically the you know the first little pump of the bull market and just prior to that had that you know wicked little crash right there in which we got pretty low matter of fact hold on before I walk away we were about negative 40 negative 40 you know, we're at negative 42 right now <clears throat> so money flow is the lowest it's been since the end of the bear market I would like to think that that means we're at the end of this short bear trend well, sort of short but you never know uh, right we're in uncharted territory you want to get into the bitcoin cycles and the potential super cycles and we could talk about that later but right now uncharted territory personally i happen to think the law of diminishing returns and extended cycles makes a lot of sense i mean it it fits so uh yeah you can look into that for yourself Let me take a sip here real quick Crisp and clean, no caffeine. I don't even remember what that's from. All right, <clears throat> back to Marcus Cipher P. So that's your money flow. <clears throat> that's your big overall general trend indicator, as you can see by now. Now these blue waves, those are momentum waves. Those are a little bit more closely tied to the price. Let me zoom out here a little bit so you can get a better idea here. So, obviously, you can see the price dips down, comes up, dips down, comes up, comes up, kind of comes over a little bit, dips down a little bit, comes up, you know, and it oscillates. That's what the price does. That's what everything in nature has its little cycles, its oscillations, its, its frequencies, <coughs> and it's the same thing here. And this, you are seeing its oscillations its frequencies, its ups and downs. And generally, you know, when these are going up, the price is going up. When these are coming down, the price is coming down. Fairly straightforward. When you get a green dot, <coughs> it's not necessarily the very tippy tippy bottom of the momentum wave obviously here you got a green dot came down a little further got a red dot this is a bad example but then immediately got a green dot now what those dots are is you'll see this yellow line cutting through the middle just you know crisscrossing about the zero line like a 
Catusius, like a snake on a pole. Did I say that right? I hope so. Anyways, if when you first get Market Cipher, this will actually look a little bit different. This will be more like this. <clears throat> It'll be on the, the area uh, style. And what this is, this is the VWAP. And, you know, if you are a Market Cypher customer and you're on the Discord or you're talking to people or you're listening to Crypto Face or Flopping Groper or anybody who does any Market Cypher, you are going to hear them refer to the VWAP. And the VWAP is incredibly important. That is your current immediate term oscillation, your price movement. And let me come down, let's go down to the one hour. <clears throat> and you will see here a whole bunch of hackery going on. Look at that money flow and VWAP. It's just, it's pandemonium, I tell you. Sorry. But let's take a look here. So your VWAP is coming down and it's crossing over the zero line when it crosses over the zero line you get a little green dot look at that wasn't that wasn't that nice of them give you a nice little winky blinky little dot like that just to tell you that something important is happening <coughs> now you'll notice it spikes up a little bit oh it came back down it crossed past the zero line again you got a little red dot again Cross the zero, got a little green dot. Cross the zero, got a little red dot. Coming down gives you red, going up gives you green. This should be fairly self-explanatory. <clears throat> now, this isn't quite like the momentum wave. When you see the momentum waves, you know, you're seeing a lower swing your momentum waves coming down lower you're seeing it come up but it's not really it's not pumping up here into the heights it's it's chilling in the burbs <clears throat> so it's only kind of coming up to here and then you get these short little waves that we like to call trigger waves now not every small wave is a trigger wave but you are generally looking for a bunch of signs and those signs may be, you know, you got this big loping wave. <clears throat> and then you get this little, like, okay, it, you know, you see this, you get some divergence coming down on these momentum waves. It's getting, sh you know, higher lows, or sorry, lower highs. Apparently I can't speak today. And you get a nice big wave. Nice big dip with your blood diamond. Pops back up. It's still a lower high. But it's just a wee bitty wave and then bam. Shoots back down. You know, if if this were inverted, we would have called that a pump. That would have been a nice little swing trade. And that little trigger wave would have shot you off a nice little uh nice little profit there. But it's really not a great example that's at the bottom of a, a dip. Um, this one could be a little bit. You know, we came up, pulled back, higher lows up here. Very much higher low <clears throat> up here. Could be a little trigger wave. You could have fired off a trade. At least gotten a little something. It didn't pull back terribly far. Could have kept it going. Again, bad example. The charts are pretty crazy. It's doing its kangaroo jack thing, bouncing around, going sideways, just rolling through the outback. But you can see, back to the VWAP here, it pretty much directly follows the price, but it's not going to tell you, you know, how far that price is going to go. It's just telling you the direction you're heading in and I want to reiterate that word direction 
because the number one most important thing about Market Cipher is it shows you the general direction the market is going. Uh, up and above anything and everything else, the most important part <clears throat> is it's showing you the direction the market is going. Look here. You've got an obvious trend coming down here. Your RSIs are apparently doesn't want to let me draw. RSIs are coming down. <coughs> uh, momentum waves coming down, both up here and down here. You know, if, if you're in the moment and you're like right here, let's say. You know, your money flow is uh, honestly kind of jacked up. But if you're right here, your money flow is coming back down. You know, your VWAP just came down. Your momentum's coming down. <clears throat> your RSI is coming down. What do you, what do you think is going to happen? It's going down. Meet me in a trap. It's going down. You know, I mean, that's... You can see it. Yeah, if you if you pull back a little bit, I get like I was saying from a wider view and take a look, not necessarily even at any one specific thing, but look overall and you can see it's trending down. You know, it, your money flow is <clears throat> it's choppy, it's back and forth, which it that in of itself is weak. It means, you know, there there's no big generalized flow of money in this case, into Bitcoin, that's going to make this thing pump. At the same time, there really wasn't a huge amount in this area right here that would make it dump either. But again, we just got done dumping a little bit, and we did have a bigger red money wave. And then what normally would maybe have been a nice green money wave was a terribly weak green money wave that still had signs pointing down which sure enough culminated in another red money wave and another dump and again look at this things are trending back upward RSI is going back up you know momentum waves down here were sketchy that's another thing we could talk later when you get into specifics but you can see up here even money wave ah, momentum waves money waves there you go there's there's a new indicator crystal face get you some money waves although i guess that's what the the money flow is but you know it's, it's going up and sure enough even here look it's starting to go up but this is one thing that i want to touch on when you have these rsis and these RSIs are spread apart. And this is an important one too. And a lot of people from what I've seen in various chats are, are kind of just starting to really utilize this and t talk about it and figure it out. Is that when these RSIs are spread, that is also weakness. You know, th this is the, the gazelle that sprained its little ankle out on the savanna. It's not going to make it, fellas. It's, it's, it's weak. You know, that puma is going to attack. So even though this is going up, this is going up, it was weak. It got caught by the lion. And it dumped. And it wasn't a terrible dump, but you know what you normally would see and you would think, okay, momentum's coming up, momentum's coming up. We got ourselves what could be a little trigger wave. But if you were to, let's say we hid, let's say we were right here, you know, things are looking up, RSI is looking up, but you got this spread, you have this, this sign of weakness. And what did it do? It broke down. It wasn't terrible, it didn't go dumping off, but still, it broke down. And then we kind of V-shaped, we rebounded a little bit off this big momentum wave. And the RSI picked back up, but now it was tighter. They were tighter together. They were stronger together. Apes stronger together. 
came up, hung out up here for a little bit. You know, th this this could have been a nice little trade right here. And money flow was coming up, then started coming down. But even look at this, now it works both ways. Things were coming down, momentum waves coming down, even at the time money flow was coming down, but we had this big split. What happened? Yeah, it still came down, but it didn't dump. It didn't come down that hard. It actually kind of er, turned itself around and started uh, heading in a little bit of an upward direction. Now again, here we are. RSI split. Did we go anywhere? Did we pump? You know, are we doing SpaceX on our way to the moon? No, we're not. So again, the market right now is uh, it's tricky. It really is. You know, it's it's not the the greatest trading time but at the same time if you learn the environment learn what's going what's been going on lately you know take a look at the last few weeks take a look at even the last couple months and look for these broad general patterns and you'll kind of see let me come in a little bit more even we're coming up we're coming up our size are split didn't make it came down okay roll back around for another shot this one it was a little split but I know honestly it wasn't terrible but you know we're still in this generally downward direction we come up here on a higher time frame downward direction downward RSI a little bit of divergence coming in here and if you, for those who don't know, my uh, beginners out there, divergences again, prices coming down, indicators pointing up. What happened? You can see in the momentum wave, we got a little pump. We got a little pump. A little bit of weakness in the RSI. Wasn't anything spectacular came back down and I bet you if we go up on a higher time frame than this you'll see the same thing you know it up there it was probably a blip you know we go up to the the 12 hour daily five day weekly oh I apologize I actually forgot an indicator as part of market cipher a the all coveted yellow X this guy right here there may be imitators but there are no duplicators the yellow x in market cipher is the the sort of the manipulation indicator or the whale move indicator and basically it's signifying large movements I believe on the books, obviously, I don't know specifically because uh, Crypto Face ain't about to show me that code and I would never ask him to. But that can be a strong indicator that big things are about to happen, typically to the downside. I mean, I don't think it's ever showed a yellow X to the upside, but just because it shows something doesn't mean uh, big things popping. But in this case, obviously it did. And let me see if I can find... Ah, oh, you little bastard. If I can find... There's... <coughs> particularly, we got a couple here. A strategy known as the 4 yellow X strategy. See if I can find one. What do we got here? One, two, three, four. All right. Technically, we got five, but we're just going to pretend that guy didn't exist. So, when you're dumping, you're skiing the uh, bloody slopes down the chart, and you come across your four X's. I mean, this one's a little bit spread back there, but it, it could be four, it could be five. Hell, I've seen more than that, depending on uh, how much uh, she just doesn't like you. See, here's another one. When you see those four X's, Oftentimes it is a sign that there's exhaustion, 
particularly in the whale moves and the manipulation. And it's it's not a guaranteed thing. It doesn't really mean that. It, the, it, the, the indicator doesn't know that. But often enough, when you get the four yellow X's, it tends to take a break for a minute. It tends to come back up. Again, like we see here, it was coming down. Okay, it took a break. Went upish sideways. Eh, still downish sideways. Up a little bit. And then it got back to business. We got another yellow X, but still came sideways again. Blood Diamond wasn't the end of the world, but was a little bit of a dip. And then whoop, did its V-shaped recovery, as people like to say. And it came up, but then just kept going sideways. Red X, dump, yellow X. And yeah, tried to reach the center of the earth with that one. And again, it, you know, this should iterate that these things are not 100% solid gold. These, if you see a certain symbol, it doesn't mean short it right now. You know, there are other indicators out there that literally tell you with nice little tags and little signs that say buy, sell, sell. Um. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I'll make that decision myself because unless you've got some super quantum computer AI looking at these charts, and if you did, the market would be completely screwed because any AI would just crash global markets because it'd just be so smart. It would just, just kill everybody. I mean, it'd be Skynet of crypto. It would wreck the market. Maybe we just couldn't keep up. But even if you had, uh, you know, a half-assed AI by today's standards, I st I'd still be skeptical of it telling me to buy or sell. Because you, you just, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, uh, Michael Saylor is fond of saying, you know, all your models and all your patterns are great, but they don't mean shit when King Kong comes in and kicks over your playground. I mean, anything can happen. You know, you get some FUD in the news and it could send the price down. A little, actually, on that note, and I'll probably wrap it up with this one, is with the FUD, it don't always give it as much credit as everybody likes to. For example, when we were getting to the top of the market right here, the previous time <coughs> and we were reaching right about here I believe when everybody start you know Elon Musk was putting FUD out on Twitter and he was they were stopping Bitcoin mining because it was bad for the environment and all this stuff and everybody was blaming Elon Musk for Bitcoin price crashing we were out here saying Look, we've been saying this for a minute. We've been saying this for weeks. You know, the signs are there. Bearish divergence up here on the uh, on the momentum waves. Bearish divergence on the money flow. Come up to the weekly. Right about here. What do we got? Momentum's coming back down. RSI's coming back down. Money flow's coming back down. VWAP is coming down. I mean... That's what Market Cipher will do for you. It wasn't a shock to anybody who knew what to watch for with this indicator. And when they were out there saying that Elon Musk crashed the crypto market, we were like, man, shut the fuck up. Seriously. Like, you know, whatever. You could, you know, you could blame it on whatever you want. Did it have an effect on it? I'm sure it may have. I'm sure it may have had, may have, had an effect on retail. Because, you know, retail can be finicky. I get that. You know, that's where you get meme coins and meme stocks. You know, uh, the Wall Street bets stuff. Like, yeah, no, that that's a legit thing. It happens. But when you're talking <coughs> an asset with... What do we got here? That's crypto total. Where, where's, our, uh, where's our Bitcoin market cap futures? Been a while since I looked at this Bitcoin dominance, and we'll get into some of this stuff later on too. Historical volatility, 
But okay, we'll just we'll go with total crypto. So total market cap of two trillion dollars. Two trillion. I mean, I, I know these numbers don't mean as much to us anymore with Congress passing these ridiculous expenditure bills, but two trillion is still a lot. I mean, you look at like the top market caps in all the U.S. markets, and crypto in general is doing really well considering how young it is. I mean, obviously you've got stuff like you know Tesla, Google, Facebook, all that you know Microsoft. But you are not going to completely control this entire market just because you said something on Twitter. I mean, you know, short of, short of there being a tweet saying that crypto is permanently banned from the United States. It's, it's just it's not going to happen like that. And the signs were there. The signs were there. Look, we're on the market cap. Divergence. The signs were there. Look at this. VWAP was just hugging below zero. And we we're still going up. So, you know, don't put all your stake into the FUD. Don't take it to the bank with you. Do your own analysis or, you know, or find somebody who you respect, that you like their analysis, that is keeping it real, that's being honest that's another big one you know and there's there's good people out there i know i watch some of them and uh i hope that maybe i could be uh another one for you guys so i don't know i don't really care if you like or comment or anything like that you know i'm not i'm not doing youtube for the money i'm doing it so i can get better and hopefully it may you know help you guys get better and so with that you know just be good Live your life because it ain't going to last forever. And uh, spend time with the ones you care about. Be cool to the people around you. And uh, grind hard. Peace.